find the reading in the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verses 12. Genesis 26, 12. And Isaac sowed in that land, received it the same year under four. The Lord blessed him. The man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds, great store servants, and the Philistines in all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the days of Abraham his father. The Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And had said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Isaac departed thence and fixed his head in the valley of Gerrit, where there Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the name by which his father had called them. Isaac's servants digged into that and found there a well of springing water. Twelve through nineteen, if correct or read, out of the twenty-sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, they would pray. Dear God, tonight we pray that you promise that you work back in all this building. A little over satanic, demonic force out of it. He nothing but the fire and the Holy Spirit of all We pray that when we walk from these two <coughs> worlds tonight, we'll walk with a consciousness we've been where God for us. Yes, Father, we pray thy blessing upon this church and upon every member of it. We pray thy blessing upon these other precious men of God and their churches that have come to visit with us tonight. Thank you for that presence. And I pray God you give them a special blessing for doing it. And give that church a new strength for doing it. Now, Father, we pray tonight to revive those of us that are saved and save the lost. We pray, God, now that the Holy Spirit shall have control throughout the remaining part of the service. And give us victory over the devil's forces. We'll pray if you continually for it because it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to think with you tonight on the 18th verse that I read to you all ago, uh, out of the 26th chapter of the Genesis. And I have to dig again the wells of water, which they had in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had struck them after the death of Abraham. And Isaac did again the wells of water. We have an interesting story and a very meaningful, powerful story connected with this experience of Isaac. He did again the wells of water. Water is a necessity. Animal life and plant life cannot survive without water. And we here have an interesting story. Isaac has been unusually blessed, and his crops were increased, his cattle increased, and the Philistines became envious of him. They became jealous of him and wanted to get rid of Isaac. So as a result, they set out to fill up the wells. They reached within themselves now. He's got all of these cattle, he's got his family, and he'll have to have a well of water that can't survive. And so we'll just fill up the wells, and they can't get more water, they'll have to move. Isaac was becoming greater <coughs> than the Philistines. And they were very envious of him and jealous of him. So they didn't want to be mean to him, but they tried to slip him out in an easy way 
And they reached among themselves, and quickly if these wells show up, they can't get no water. They'll have to move out because the bandits are going to have to have water, and the animals, the cattle, and the herds are going to have to have water, and they're going to have to survive, so we get rid of them. Now, the reason that the Philistines, my friends, was envious of Isaac was because God was blessing Isaac, and he was being increased over in such a way that they just couldn't stand the blessings of God upon him. So they sought out to get rid of him some way, somehow. And that's an interesting thing. You see, people never get envious or jealous of somebody who less than they are. That's right. In other words, you don't see people getting jealous of drugs and harlots and prostitutes and gamblers and tramps. It's always when somebody excels somebody, that's when they begin to get jealous and envious and try to move that person away from them. And that's the case, my friends, that took place right here. And you'll find it all through life, that's always the case. And so when people begin to get envious and jealous, they'll try to do things to get rid of him. Uh, to illustrate what I'm trying to say, uh, one time in the middle was a little donkey, and a pack of wolves came by. And that pack of wolves said to the donkey, you're not so missing. Wolves, would you see that big, fine, beautiful, fat horse up there? Big, 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 fine. Run out this meadow for us. The wolves said, fine. <coughs> he said, mistreat. Oh, no, he don't mistreat. But right now, why isn't there never grass for all the meadows full of grass? Can never eat it all. But right now, why isn't there enough water in the meadow for all the whole single one, see? But right now, isn't there enough room for all that sleep in the meadow? Oh, yes! But right now! Well, if the donkey is not the, he said to the donkey, if the horse is not mistreating the room for all that sleep, plenty of grass, plenty of water, what do you want to run it out for? So because when people travel the road, they see that big fine fat horse grazing out there, then they see me. And it shows up on that old ugly scrawny donkey I have and they get to compare me to him. And it really learns me. Uh, and if that horse went out there, they'd see how fine a donkey I am. And I want you to run him out. Well, that's the best way for you to remember what's going on when people get envious of you and jealous of you and start fighting you because you're trying to serve God. Just remember, they're nothing but a bunch of kicking, waiting, popping, and donkeys. Amen. <laughs> you remember something else, and that is that they can't kick you unless you're in front. <laughs> and when folks start, start kicking you, just remember you out front or they couldn't kick you. Amen. My friend, just remember, when they start flopping their ears and kicking and praying, you show them up. And they're trying to get you out of the middle. They're trying to get you to quit. They're trying to discourage you. They're trying to run you off. They're trying to rid you, you, you their sense of you being there because it shows up how little and how old count they are. And you let somebody get blessed of God in the church and start taking the lead in the church and start really doing things in the church and the old kick and break and walk in the darkness of Amen. And the reason they're doing it is trying to discourage you so you won't show them up. Yeah. As long as nobody else is doing the thing, well, I don't show up how sorry you are. Yeah. Amen. But when somebody gets to do something for God, even yeah. out for God and honoring God, then the donkey start kicking in the way. Yeah. So if you remember that, it'll get you as you go along through your life. Yeah. And there ain't no way to kick it. Pretty good sign you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. But a good sign you nowhere. But a good sign you do nothing. Yeah, amen. Now let's go back and pick up the story. God said to Abraham, Abraham, get up and go into the country that I'll show you. Take your families in your hands. Abraham gets up one day, gets to see his family, gets to see his church, and we won't travel. Where to? Come along. 
Lord just said, get going. I'm going. And they would say, you heard about a boy? He's lost his mind. He's lost his mind. He's going up all of his herd and his, all of his uh, holiday and his family. He just headed out. He don't even know where he's going. Old man. Got up so much religion, he's got so upset, he don't know where he came from. Yeah. <laughs> he lost his mind over there. Where are you going, baby? Oh, no. Just go to where God said he said. He didn't get a block of Abram, he lost his mind. He didn't attract it. But on he goes. And after a while, he finds a place, and God said, here it is, Abram. Stop right here. Old Abram got out and built an altar. And worship God and honor God and set up there and dug in some wells to water his man and his cattle. And they became blessed. And his nephew by the name of Lot had gone along with Abram. And he had a lot of herds and cattle, herdmen, and so on. And as a result, the scripture tells us in the 13th chapter of Genesis that Lot's herdmen and Abel's herdmen had stirred up a strife. The strife among the herdmen of Lot and the herdmen of Abraham. In other words, they got the bucket. They stirred up some division and some strife. And they're having buckets over who's going to graze where and who's going to walk where. Abraham called in his men and said, Look, Lot, we are brethren. We are Christian, so to speak, what we call it. He said, We are brethren. Lot don't be fussing. Lot don't have a bunch of fussing and strife going on here. Let's get over that. I'll tell you what, Lot, you take what you want. The whole world's out here in front of us, and I'll get what's left. Come on, Lot, make a decision. Well, Lot was young and all excited, and he looked around and thought, well, there's the hills. Down down to the plains of Jordan, look at that good head of grass. Look at that river line. Uncle Abel was done kind of meeting him. He's a rich old man. He don't have to make no more. I'm just getting started out of my family, and I mean real. Let's go down here. He said, all right, Abraham, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the planks of Jordan and carry my herd and my herdmen and my family that direction. See what he did when he went down there? He got all the water country. He got all the grass country. And left my great half of just old dry hills and no water. Now let me tell you something. He took advantage of Abraham. And it's as sinful and wicked to steal and cheat and take advantage of the millionaires it is before them. It's not who you take advantage of, it's a principle of what underlies in you that makes you go out for a song. He thought, well, Abraham's got it made. I'll make it now. Now if he wasn't done what was right. He said, Uncle Abram, since you're so nice about it, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll come off a little place here and let you, your herd and your herd go down there and get water down the river and eat some of that tender grass and range back up the hills. And then I'll take this other part over here and take a little of the hills up here and we'll divide it up. No, he wasn't worried about Abraham's and his herd. They could starve death far as he's concerned. I'm going to do it while I get it. Yeah. I'm going to get it made now. I'm going to be rich. Well, Uncle Abram didn't throw a fit. He didn't get mad. Lot of took his cattle and his herds and his herdmen, headed down there and took his family, moved into the plains of Jordan where all the grass was and where all the water was. He said, Boy, we've got it made now. Uncle Abram didn't throw a fit and say, you young stop to you dirty cheating. You took advantage because I gave you ten. No, he didn't. He said, no. And he got all moved down there. Abram went back out to the altar and got out and worshipped God. 
Now check that out, Abraham. Different. Uh, Look eastward, westward, northward, southward. Everything you see, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to bless those that bless you, and I'm going to bless those that bless your descendants, and curse those that curse your descendants. Right. He made a covenant with Abraham that's as true tonight as it was the day God spoke to you. So as a result, he said, I'll just bless you and bless your descendants, and bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you and your descendants. God never has broken that promise. He right. still holds that covenant in Abraham. Do you know tonight, ladies and gentlemen, why America is blessed as we are blessed? It's because we showed respect to the Jews. Right. 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 Grafted and the engrafted, if you please. My right. friends, what I mean by that, the natural descendant of Abraham has always been respected and honored in this country, and the engrafted, which is the born again Christian, right. that makes us the descendants of Abraham, so to speak. As a result of it, my friends, God blessed America like no other nation's right. ever been blessed. Right. God blessed this country right. like no other country's ever been blessed. As a result of it, we have bountiful supplies of food and of wealth and shelters and clothes and everything else that the other nations of the world's never had. And every nation that's jumped on this nation has been cursed by it. Right. So, my friends, did you know the reason tonight you're living in abundance in this country and being blessed with the freedoms and the blessings and the possessions of this country is because <laughs> that this country, America, has had respect for the Jews right. and right. the descendants of Abraham, both the natural and the engrafted, which means we've respected Christian people and Christian leadership and respected the churches of this country. And that's the reason God's blessed us. We've shown respect to the church and to God's churches and to God's saints and to the descendants of Abraham. And God has blessed us bountifully. And as a result, oh, Abraham got up from them, went out and dig the wells and found plenty of water. He wanted his cattle. He wanted his family. He had an old grass come up there and he needed to take care of his cattle. None of his cattle starved to death. He had a lane, and as a result, we go down and look back over Mr. Lot for a little while, and we see Lot as he moved down there in the midst of well, where the grass was, where the water was, where every advantage was, moved his family in there, but he fixed his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And the men in Sodom and Gomorrah were exceedingly sinful and exceedingly wicked. And as a result, as he moved them in there, he took up the habits. Yeah. Amen. And his family took up the habits of the Sodomites and Gomorrahites. They no longer had altars of prayer. They had dances and feasts and drinking yeah. and frolic and yeah. sex and everything else. They left the altars out. I can imagine when they first got down there, the mayor of Sodom and the mayor of Gomorrah uh, said he was a gritty industry. All of Lot and his husbands have moved in. It's been even us before. And we're going to celebrate. They declared a celebration. They fixed parties. They have served all kinds of drinks and dancing. And Lot's fan has been brought up around the altars of Abraham. No doubt those girls and Lot had calluses on the knees and me and so much. And they, but they never been dancing. And their feet were soup. Got down there. And they started the dancing with the sons of the mayors of the two cities and the city slickers. They're so long they didn't know how to shift their feet and sit in Bass Road, Mrs. Lot to them. And she said, honey, let's take them home. I'm in Bass Road. They see, they don't give to the boys when they're dancing with them. It's they're so long, but it's embarrassing to me. Let's go home. She calls the school and dancing and teaches how to teach her daughters how to dance. Yeah. And they'll be so civil and connected by the next day. When she gets through with them, they can go back to the next party and dance and, and know how to yield their bodies to the men as they dance with them. And so as a result, they go back in there as dancers and prancers, not prayers or musicians, but dancers and drinkers and to take up the habits of the crowd down that side of the bar and lift God out of the picture completely. Some kind of old woman come up to me and said, Preacher, what do you think about me? 
I let my little daughter go to the tap dancing school. Teach her tap dancing, I think, and I think it's a good way to let your daughter find out how to take her heel and kick the trap door head over the pole in. That's right. Amen. She said, oh, it teaches her to carry her body so gracefully. <laughs> I said, I don't have a daughter, but if I had one, I'd rather she wallow up the hill to fight in the head than the bridge that makes all this. Yeah. 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 There it is, sir. All they've done about this is sin, some son, and some horror. They've got that picture their fathers one after another, and the cattle's multiplied, the herdsmen's living it up, the wives of rock and the daughters. And they bad some of those city slickers, and they've all left God out. Yeah. Now you listen to me. You remember there was a time when they went to old Baal and said, put a curse upon the children of Israel. Baal said, I can't curse them. Amen. That which God has blessed, you can't curse. Amen. Amen. And he said, we'll give you so much silver. He said, if you give me that house full of silver, I still couldn't curse them. Because what God has anointed and God has blessed, you can't curse. Yes. But he said, I'll tell you, King, what you can do. You can move in a bunch of immoral people down there and get them to live in that with those Israelites, and they'll take up their habits, and then God will destroy them yes. because they got away from God. So as a result, the king got a bunch of naked women and moved them in down there, went along to the Sodomite Abbey until this city was destroyed by the wrath of God because they took up the habits of the world. And this is exactly what's going to happen. Here's Lot's family. He'd been brought up with Abraham, taught God, preached and knew everything about God, and his family knew about God. But now they moved down here with the Sodomites and Gomorrahites, and they're sinful and wicked in heaven. And as a result, Lot and his family, he has heard and take up the habits and the social life of the Sodomites and Gomorrahites. Yeah. And they begin to dance with them, to drink with them, to commit to sex acts with them, and so on. And they really got the cattle growing. They really got the herd all fixed, and they swim and live. What a time they had. We don't have to go to church anymore. We don't have to listen to what Abraham anymore. We don't have to pray anymore. We got to make it. And they really live it up. My, what a time they had. Cattle on the back, the grass growing, the herdmen happy. Lots spent all excited in indulging. We don't have to pray no more and go to the altar no more and worship God no more. We're just living it up. And all of a sudden, my post store sent me a couple of messages from God. God's got enough of you. He sent us down here to tell you if you want your family out here, you better get them out of it in the morning. God's going to send brimstone far down here and burn this whole mess up. Your herd, your herdman, then your family says that he's going to burn them up. And he's going to burn this whole mess up. And Lot runs in, runs over to one daughter's house and they're partying and tries to get them to get up and get out of there. And they make fun of him. He goes over to the next daughter's house and they're dancing and drinking and he tells them about it and they laugh at him. And he insists they get out and leave. The scripture said the little Lot to the gate and put him out and said, leave us alone. And the next morning he tells his wife that night about all of that. But the next morning, his wife wouldn't believe what God's messengers have said. Right. And as a result, you know the story. As a result, the next morning, Lot got up. Said, we better get out of here, folks. Come on. His children laughed at it. His grandchildren laughed at it. The in-laws laughed at it. The herds were laughed at it. His wife was sad. And all of them didn't believe it. But old Lot started out. His wife just spoke with God. And great God loved to the word of the Bible. I wonder if there's any smoke coming up yet. She came back. She went to Pepper Shaw. Oh, I kept being down. Before he got to the top of the hill, he could smell the burning flesh of his children, his grandchildren. He could smell the burning flesh of the herd and the husbands. He dared not look back. He got out of these in such a shape, he shook up till he got drunk and committed adultery <coughs> with his two daughters. Gave birth to two of the wicked generations ever cursed in society, the whole wives of Amorite. Took ten generations to that mess up. Why? My friends, all because he left God and 
convinced to stand down on a Now we got a lot of folks that get jealous and get envious and they start fussing in the church. Start confusion in the church. And a lot of them get mad and take their families out and go out into the world to the beaches and the mountains and the picnics and family. Just don't go back up that hell church. It's not the, that preacher you just preach right up just to wear the red army now. Everybody here is preaching. <laughs> Let's don't go back no more. Let's take our families and go picnic and beaching and mountain and family and you come on. Let's get it home and look at the hell of it. Just let them know. And while you're out there, they're going to your family's going to take up and the habits of what crowds you'll run with yeah. and the whole bunch is fixing straight hey, yeah. 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 Now, the one time you can go so far from God that God will hear the saints' prayers for you. Right. You see, when God told Abraham what his face to do, Abraham got out and prevailed for Lot. And that, that's one time God wouldn't hear Abraham. Abraham said, if I find some righteous, say, yes, 50, yes, 40, yes, 30, yes, 5 and 20, yes, 10, yes. But he couldn't even find 10. And old Abel had to stand there and watch the smoke go up and shot him the north burning because God wouldn't hear his prayer. I will tell you, you can take out on your church and the vows you made to God to kill what you made of God in the United Church and run off with your families and pitch them down there in the devil's crowd and society. Yeah, and the word of God Almighty will put a curse on you yeah. and damn your family and burn them all stuff in hell. Yeah. And all the great yeah. Christian people in the world yeah. can't pray all of them in God's time. Yeah. 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 That's saying, just don't pray to run off down there. Do not go away from having to stay with God. And build your own to teach your family to worship God for this thing. And I don't want you to see my friends, the Sodomites, were nothing but a bunch of modern day homosexuals. If I want the proof of it, look, that night when the angels, the messenger of God, got on there, they noted these two messengers, the men and the boys of the street, were a homosexual crowd. They demanded the men. Well, I said, I'll give you my two daughters. Imagine that they didn't want women. They wanted men because they had the men because of that sin. And as a result, they tried to break in. And God gave those messages power to make them blind and stand it out in the streets. But the thing I want you to know is that the Dead Sea's back today where Sodom and Gomorrah used to stand, nothing lives in that water. Rivers flow into it that are fresh water. Some of the purest water on the face of the earth from the mountains of Lebanon flow in there, and it becomes dead water. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea, and the rising or the falling of the level of that sea never takes place. It stays at the same level year round. Nothing lives in it. Nothing lives around it. And God said in the book of Peter that he left it as an example and a warning for those who should live godly afterward. And you go out and leave God out and take out on your church and violate the vows you made and the oath you took when you united with God's church and take your family away from God's church and head out of the bench and drink and cussing, travel desecrators, beach scores, and now the Lord has a family even paid me crowd to leave God out and leave the church out. I've got news for you, buddy. Before God Almighty tonight, I'll tell you that God's fixing to damn some of your family in hell right, and give you a terrible right, experience right, yourself on it. Yeah. I want you to know that tonight. On the other hand, Abraham was blessed and his descendants are blessed. And my friends, all the time a lot of little confusions making folks take out on God like Lot did. I never saw a Baptist church blow up by a thing big. Amen. But I've seen a lot of them stay right up over some little man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I remember old parents in Arkansas. I was over there in a meeting, found out they hadn't had a soul saved in nine years. And that that's no fun. I said something wrong. I got to preaching and digging around and I finally found out what's wrong. You know what's wrong? The church split nine years before that over an old hen, an old chicken, get the wind bro. <laughs> One woman raised flowers for the market. The other woman raised chickens. This woman, she can get over and scratch up this woman's flowers. She went on there and asked her to keep her chickens at home. They were paying for them. 
Shall I rock one day? Spent I am not in. So the woman raises flowers when I look at her chain link fence six feet high around her brown heart. The little chicken would scratch him up. One day one of those hens flew over that tall fence and scratched up her butt. She went home settled this when the other woman's home settled would you be kind enough and cooperated for nothing? To clip the end of the feathers on the way of your hand. She can't find to clip the feathers off in one wing, which is true. And she said that keep them flying over. She said, now I went to the expense of building the things. <coughs> I think you ought to cooperate enough to clip the feathers on that old hen wing. I'll not do it. I've sat and taken for in the looks and appearance of my hands to the public. Now I'm not coming up. Well, they were all by, they were too. She flew over and scratched up the woman's flowers again. She went out with some cloth, picked up a hard pot of dirt, threw it to old hen to scare it out of her flower garden, hit the old hen on the wing and broke it. That old hen went home flopping that broke wing and squawked. <laughs> woman brought her on out of the house. And those two women met in the street and had a half of them cussing fight over the <laughs> And about 50% of the church was kinfolks on each side. Spread the church right down the middle over that old hill and getting a wing broke. And they still a fussing and a cussing and a complaining and feuding over that old hill. Nine years, souls are dying and going to hell by the crowd for nine years Amen. in order for two people to hold a grudge about an old hill. Yeah. I was up there in the state of Kentucky. They invited me to come up there and conduct a revival meeting. I went up there to conduct a meeting. They didn't have no church house, no church in Franklin Fest. And as I went up there to conduct that meeting, here it was. There they were. Neaton Church real there. Had a great meeting. One man got to sell get $25 on the all of a sudden sell it real and get $1,500. We rang our boys to help work and do the work for him. They built one of the first good churches you ever saw out in the country. Fifteen Sunday school rooms in it. Got that done, it's paid for. These men took their sons and worked along beside each other all during that time. Then they built a beautiful pastor on out on the hill and paid for it. That's the happiest bunch of people I think I ever knew. But not long after that, these two men that was leaders in the church and gave the mind their time and worked their sons fell out over two foot of property. What? One of them said the line run right there. Not so, it run right here. Not so, it run right there. <laughs> Just two feet. Mm -hmm. Not a place big enough to bear me. Just two foot of property. They died in a few And the longer they bust them out of the night. Father one jumped in his car and went to the house and got his shotgun and come down and shot the other and killed him there on the other spot. And there wasn't enough property to lay him out on. Wasn't enough property to bury him on. As a result, they left his wife and five children. They sent the other fellow to the penitentiary for life for first degree murder and left his wife and eleven children without support and left a family feud in that church that's kept it split ever since. What over? Over two feet of ground. Not enough to bury either one of them. If one of them had been like Abraham said, look, we are brethren in the church. I'll tell you what to do. Since you say it goes there, take you two more feet. That belief been four foot enough to bury me. No, sir. They wrecked the church. Disgrace the shells and defeat in their futures Amen. by building and fussing over two foot of ground. Two foot of ground. You say that's fair, but some of you got your feet in a shirt and went home and quit over less than two feet of ground. Amen. 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 And you won't get over it. You cover your family to red and die more ahead on that because. Confess that you just want to be like that. Amen. That's the whole business tonight. You got folks in this church and other churches got their little feelings hurt and they took their families out and quit church and running somewhere else and trying to send and sending their children to wreckage and hell rather than confess that there's wrong. Give up the fact that 
makes me straight a little bit. What if God is straight a little bit? Bless God, it ain't worth wrecking your man and saying hell over him. Amen. Amen. But there it is. I never have understood preacher. Ron Simpson, if you ever figure this out, you tell me words. Two men will get in a fight over politics and just beat each other up and cuss each other. And three months afterward, they run around and run loop and around eating with each other and fellowship of each other. Get mad over a business deal, and they'll just have a real fist fight and fuss, and threaten to kill each other and everything else in less than three months' time. They're fellowshipping together, running around together, again, have some social disorder, family effect, and they get mad at each other and just fuss and cuss and rant and threaten to kill each other, but a few weeks they're back together eating again. But you let somebody get mad in the church, and they won't ever, as long as they live, get over it. They'll have a feud as long as they live. Amen. I can't think of that. They get over everything else except they just, the devil got them, and he still got them, and he's going to keep them. That's all I'm saying. Amen. 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 But my friends, a lot of people took out on God because the, somebody, something didn't go through the judge. They call me, they didn't call me, saying, they didn't notice me. And they're going to go back to the call family, they're going to the meetings, and the hours, we're going to the talk and talk, so that's just, we're going to the family and let that church that preacher on. What do we care? Yeah. You're going to take them out of and the same thing going to happen to them, having a lot of family, they're going to let them go to hell most of them. Yeah. And you're waiting for them. Abram said, look here, Mark. Look at this, son. We're laughing. We're laughing for us. You take what you want. I'll take what's left. And God bless Abraham and bless him with wells of water and bless his descendants and old Isaac. When he come along, God bless him. He multiplied. Notice what he said there. He was increased with, and the man was great. The Lord blessed him hundredfold, and he went far and grew until he became very great, had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines ended him. And he said, Now then, we better not fool with him in the descendant of Abraham. We'll tell you what he'll do. We'll fill up his square. He can't get no water. He's got to move. So as a result, they went out there, the Philistines did, and dug up some earth and filled up the wells with earth. And said, now, I think you and your folks can move. I ain't got to walk. But old Isaac had better chance of that. He couldn't get who to eat him to that. He just called his servant and said, that's no problem. Let's put the wells back. Yeah, they went out there and cleaned out the wells, and the water's still in there. Wasn't nothing wrong with the water. What does the law for the wells? It is what the ballistics had put in there. Yeah. And when they got the dirt the ballistics put, uh, put in there cleaned out, they still had water. Amen. Now here's the truth I want to get over to you, my brother, my sister tonight, and my preacher friends tonight. They stopped these wells that God's people might move out. Are you here this preacher tonight? In America tonight, God has blessed America because of the wells of the churches. He's blessed this country because of the preaching word, because of the teaching word, and the singing word of the churches. The thing that's made America great is the churches. The thing that God has blessed America for is because they're the descendants of Abraham, natural Jew and engrafted Jew, which is the Mormon Christian. Right. And as a result, the communists and the modernists and the atheists and the agnostics have seen how God has blessed this country, and they're envious of us, and they're jealous of us, and they set out to fill up our worlds to get rid of us. Amen. My friends, they can't take us as long as we got strong churches in America. They mess up our government, they mess up our society, 
They can mess up a lot of things, but they become awakened to the fact that they can't destroy us as long as we've got strong churches Amen. in America. Now, our forefathers felt the way of most of the churches in our midst. And I want you to know, my friends, the devil's crowd is envious of you, and the communists, and the atheists, and the agnostics, and the infidels and skeptics are envious of us because God's blessed us, and because God's blessed your homes and blessed your community. So as a result, they said now, they are outliving us. God's blessing them more than is us. They are doing us. And they in the lead. And we've got to do something to fill up their wells so they can't have churches. So they can't have preaching. So they can't have born again people. We've got to drive them up spiritually. We've got to drive up their wells. So as a result, they set out to do it. Man. Right, right. And my friends, they want me to pay along with the wells of Abraham. They took a police and put a bunch of dirt in them. Sure, they got them cleaned out. They still all right. You hear this preaching about? There's nothing wrong with the churches. It's what the devil's put in that. Yeah. Yeah. What the dirty devil's trying to put in that church. Yeah. The church is still the New Testament church is still the truth of God. Yeah. Still the bill of truth. Still the place God meets with us. But they want to fill our churches full of things of the world. Amen. They illustrate what I'm trying to say. I was up out from, from uh, Dayton, Kentucky, a place called Van Gogh School. They wanted to start a church. Back when I was to build churches. And I went out there to the school. I was gracious enough to let us use the old schoolhouse, just a one room schoolhouse, about half. Well, it's just about as big as that one, about this way. But they told me a great thing. Our old country, one teacher schoolhouse. And they had a well outside, just a big old three foot well. And the school teacher come every day and put some water in a five gallon can cooler, put a chunk of ice in there, and then the children would get this push little spigot get water to drink. So I was there to meet. And one night while I was there for them, some damaged boys got out there and chunked that well full of cardboard and buckets. Rocks and came back. Anything they could find, they had anything they could go that way. Next morning, the school teacher brought her 25 pounds of ice and put it in the tin can, a cool can. Went out, lift the bucket down the well, get some water, and pour on the ice. And she couldn't get more water. She thought that's a well cold dry. She went to her car, got her flashlight, looked down in there, and the, the well was. About a third full of cordwood and chunks and rocks and buckets and paint, filled up up a level of water. She called the trustees of the school. They looked the situation over. They called for a well there. They tied a stick in the end of a rope. They strung a rope. They let it down in there. Tied that old cordwood and stuff around that rope and threw it out and threw it out till they got it all drawn out of the well. Put the water that was down in the bottom well was. Make it all out real good. Drew him out. And a little while she went out there and let the bucket down and then get the bucket. What about the problem with the way? It just got filled up with a bunch of dirt. Yeah. And so, my friends, when it got well paid down, then there's plenty of water. And there's water to get her drink. Now, the thing of it is, the devil's come around and put a bunch of chunks in our churches and a bunch of chunks in your lives. Yeah. And you've got salvation. You got the water, but the devil fills you up with a bunch of junk to where you can't draw another out of it. He said over the book of Isaiah, with joy shall you draw water out of the way for salvation. Amen. And so, my friends, you can't get no water because the devil put something in your way and fill up your way. And I want you to know that the enemy, the communists, the modernists, the atheist, the agnostic, the devil's crowd is trying to fill up your wells and my well and the church well where we can't get no water because you know folks will move out and leave us if they don't get anything. Amen. They're not sitting up until they can't survive without water. And so as a result, they're trying to fill up our wells. And the devil will fill your well up in a hurry. Amen. And that's what the police is. Where in this 
world is just filling up a lot of Christians well. Amen. My friends, if you're a friend of the world, you're in it with the Lord. Amen. The two don't go together. And so our churches are getting filled up with worldliness. Amen. We get more concerned about the social gospel and an entertainment that I've got to hear yeah. than we are about the power of God. Amen. Amen. All over this country now, we put on all kinds of social activities and entertainment sprays. Yeah. And we're going out and trying to get folks to come in, to excite people to come in. So they go out here and get some great athlete from some uh, yeah. place that was yeah. yeah. the greatest athlete. He'll come in here, talk about what a great Christian is, how much he means in God. That old down backslider will go out the next Sunday and play ball. Yeah. 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 He's a very old down hypocrite. He ain't fit to run with a bunch of goats, much less a yeah. bunch of goats. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, any quick as I can do. I want you to know one thing, my friends. We're reaching out and trying to find some people. The scripture said when it was brought to brought the Lord was in the house, yes. the multitude is saved. Yes. Now we've got Mr. So and so in the house, the ball where the movie star or Greg Sanger or something's coming out just and folks are flooded. But we need to get back where they get excited about coming That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be a change when they leave out. There's some will take place when they leave out. And I want you to know our churches are becoming and cater to world and it's an entertainment yeah. and folks have the harm to come to church getting bubble gum and ice cream and coke boys and that's it and hamburgers are going to run their seat yeah. and they've got to shout up and everything else and when you quit that but they got more gum than a bit of gum yeah. 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 I just want to face the truth in my Bible we're filling our churches the wells of spirituality the wells of the power of God with a bunch of words yeah. and as a result my friend they're fixing to steal our churches away from us. Yeah. They're fixing to destroy our churches and Christianity in America, the devil's ground down. Yeah. Not only that, but they come up with all sorts of religions now. Yeah. 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 Well, religion, religion. We live in the most religious age it's ever been. Right. Every yeah. kind of religion, the moon, crowd, and the children of God crowd, yeah. the Jesus movement crowd, and the deeper life crowd, amen. and the new life crowd, and the tongue crowd, yes, amen. and the Jews for Jesus crowd. We got all sorts of facts of religion sweeping this country. Amen. My friends, all sorts of facts of religion. Right. Amen. You say, what do you mean, facts? <laughs> well, that's all they are, just facts of religion. Amen. That's all. The cults of Jehovah's Witness and all that mess, just fads, that's all. Amen. What do you mean by the fad, preacher? Here's what I mean. You know what a fad is, don't you? <laughs> Something that flourishes for a while, then it comes out. Yeah. Amen. For example, you get a little when everybody, grandma and grandpa and everybody down below, in between the what? Was who looking? Amen. <laughs> 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 Where's the hoolahoos? Gone. Oh, that's a fact. You remember when everybody was a yo yo? Where's the yo yo? Gone. Amen. Right. Amen. 
Amen. Now, you can't go no deeper than the foundation, do you, to blow up something? Amen. Amen. My friends, he didn't say go deeper. He said train out. The, he said draw the water out of the wells of salvation. Amen. So, my friends, you hear this preaching. If you ever been saved, God put a well in He that drank of this water shall become a well of water bubbling up in the everlasting life. Bless God, when you got saved, He put the well in you. Amen. Amen. It's still in there. Amen. Bubbling up. So if you're not getting in the water, it's cause the devil spills right. something up. Yeah. Since he put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to go no deeper. What you need is get your well cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. You're not out there trying to get a deeper life. Got all these fellows going over the country preaching the deep alive. The church is remembered no more. Just come out down by the conferences and bring your Bible. We'll come by the altar, bring it on from the week, study the fight in the room, and hang it, get deep from the life first thing you know, they just need to run off of some man's wife. Amen. 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 You got to put your life. You got to do something to the You got to have no way of where it's going. Amen. 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 Talk about a new life, Elliot. Listen, Jesus said when he saved you, he made a new creature of it. Amen. 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 And if you have to have a new life, bless God, why don't you come out and call it salvation for you? Amen. Amen. Instead of trying to make some book out of it. Amen. I want you to know, my friends, all of this tongue movement and throwing and sweat across the country, I've seen it first and go out. Amen. You know where it's done? Talk about it. Right. You're not right. coming to Amen. God planned the full time this world when we stayed last room, Jesus Christ. Well, God planned the full time this world. Right. What a bunch of smart sinners got here. They said, that's what it was for power. We won't go to break Jesus' way. We won't have a full time for this. We'll climb up this tower. And we'll walk up and walk over again. And when the guy stopped, God touched all the tongues and went to chat and King Jesus couldn't understand what each other said and could build it. Soon they disbanded. They couldn't understand each other. They get all those tongue talkers together, and it won't be long till the church will blow up and disband because they can't understand what each other yeah. says. Amen. And the book of James said, well, if there's confusion and division and strife, this is earthly and sensual and it's devilish. Amen. And you'll never get a tongue starting in the church. My friends, it don't bring confusion and division and strife. And the Word of God said it's earthly and sensual and devilish, and that's what it said, and that's what it is. Amen. 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 Now, if you, I want you to know one thing. You go out here if you please, looking for the Holy Ghost, looking for some kind of big experience, the devil will give you one, Amen. and it'll be a real ghost. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, my friend, just like it is, I've seen that stuff come and go. But you had to get in a church that's confusion and division and strife where it gets. You can't deny. God said that's earthly and deadness and sensual. Now he tells us in the book of the 16th chapter of John, said when the Holy Ghost will come, he'll not speak of himself or of his gift, but he'll speak of the law. Yeah. And when you folks here, folks around now saying, I've got the Holy Ghost, I can talk to them. They've got the, I've got the ghost on that, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. When the Holy Spirit comes in, he'll have you to talk about Jesus. Yeah. 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 I put your gifts in trouble. Yeah. 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 I want you to know that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to understand that tonight. Yeah. I'm not being unkind to the prince of the truth. Yeah. And he'll stand with hell from the yeah. 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 yourself, my friend, tonight. I know what I'm talking about. What you need is not some tongue jabbering spirit. If you're not right and you're not enjoying your religion, you don't need tongues. You need to get your well. Devil's got just a bunch of junk in your well. You don't need to be polite. You don't need a tongue woman. Bless God, you need a well clean for you. Amen. 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 You get your well clean out, then you behave yourself. You don't draw the Spirit of God out and flow out of you like the river. Yes, amen. Not only that, my friends, but the fashions and the styles of the day. Has my beloved feel up how well yes. you can't be spiritual running around here with shorts and halters on. With his mini skirts on. You can't be spiritual trying to expose your sacks in this instead of your godliness. Yeah. He said, Let the women be dressed in modest apparel, and you can't do it running around here dressed in the fashions of the day. 
They sent fashions to this country to fill up your wells. And long as it's all your faith, you still got salvation. But you stay with the fashions and style so long, your wells fill up, you're not enjoying being a Christian. You're as miserable and as dry as the dry dust on your feet. Amen. So you're not needing some other experience, honey. You need your well cleaned out. Amen. He says, I want that the men everywhere, the men come hold their hands and pray. Right. And if you're having pornography books, you <coughs> come around having uh, a bunch of sex magazines and run around having the beer bottles and the cussing stuff of sin, you can't hold up on the hands and pray. All right, friends, there's nothing wrong with the well. You've got the wrong stuff in your hands. So hold your hand. Get clean hands as if you're up and roll out of your way. That old stone filled out of wells. Let's talk some other ones. Trying to get out of churches out of this. Trying to get out of preachers out of this. He's filling up our well. I want you to realize my friends before God. If this has the death of Abraham, they feel a well. On Isaac, but where? Isaac had strength enough to dig him out, and bless God, he still had water. Amen. What you need? It's not some new fashion, some new fat religion, some kind of a uh, tongue or something else. What you need is a simple well of truth. Amen. That's right. Amen. Listen to me. the first son. David said, Lord, I confess myself. Ever before. Created in me a clean heart. What's he saying? Clean my will up. Renew the right spirit in me. What do you say? Created a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. What's wrong? He's full of stuff, but it's the wrong stuff he's full of. Clean out my will! Get the wrong spirit out of it! Put the right spirit back in there. Amen. Then restore to me the joy of what? Mine. He ain't free. Not mine. It's God's. Amen. Of my salvation. Amen. Give me the joy of thy salvation. Then I'll teach transgressors my way. And sinners shall be converted. Amen. What? When you get the heart cleaned out, get the right spirit back in there, and get to the joy of thy salvation. Let me get back down to the well where the salvation is. Then I'll teach transgressors my way. And sinners shall get converted. Amen. Amen. Okay, you remember when you first got saved, you were full of them? You had to tell it to somebody you could trust by them. You had to tell it to some friend, some lover, or somebody, or somebody. When you first got saved, you just had to share. You couldn't stand it without sharing. Where's that feeling now? Has God changed? Has your salvation changed? No, all that God does is for us. You can't have it to touch it, can't take it from you. And so, my friend, all it is, you just go around the devil, still do well. Salvation's still in there. The world's still in there. But you're not enjoying it because, my friends, you can't get it out for the stuff the devil's put in there. Amen. Let me give you the illustration. I was the city of the evening. Howard God was there, little girl, beautiful little girl. Got Norris to say, went home and talked to her daddy, who was the chief of the police in the city. He laughed at her. She got up the next morning, they could come to church. He said, oh, I got time to fool the church. <coughs> she went in and lay down across the door, threshold of the door, and said, Daddy, you're going to call me to come to church or step over my body. He wanted to work. He cursed and said, that's no problem. I'm going to step over your body. He did. He went to work. God used to get him under conviction. He drove downtown and he said he could see his little girl a home on the car being dragged around. When he went to the post office, he opened the mailbox and he feel like he put his little girl out instead of that. When he opened his letters in the office, he feel like he opened up and pulled his girl out. She didn't tell us that next morning. She's back in church all going, going over being saved the night before. Pretty good crowd in there. I stepped up here with a preacher and he said, Person, you see the young man back there in the corner? 
This God just in here for you. Said that's the worst criminal in this city. I don't understand why he's here this morning. Did you see the red headed girl by going into the corner? I said yes. Said she's running one of the violent houses of prostitution in woman in the city. I don't know why she's here. Said be the one of the hard to be saved and shake this whole town. I said, well, preach it for Pray for all the earnestness you've got, and I'll preach and pray, and you pray while I preach it. God will save them. And I jumped in the pulpit and went for preach with all the prayer of my soul. Pray God, save that man. Save that woman. I was right in the heat of the message. And there's a trouble of just a mile down the center of the benches, went on each side, and stood around on the double door. I saw the chief of police car. Of course, I knew nothing about what was going on, you see. She had told us that. See, chief of police drove up chief's car. He jumped out of the car and he run in that door and started running down that big wide aisle. Those brass buttons shining in that cap on that gun and cut on his hips. Just like he's going to run and grab me out of the pool. I thought it was a mean thing I'd have done. <laughs> and I near the front, he said, Mr. A! I said, chief, take over it. Chief, uh, Walked down there and took his cap off and popped it on the bench. Said, folks, y'all know me. I'm chief of the city. I saved eight years ago. When I got away from God. I got terrible away from God. He told about the experience he had with the good girl. He said, I want y'all to pray the only right I got this morning. He dropped on old knees and bowed his head and God forgave him and cleaned him up. He got up and said, God, forgive me and clean up all the church forgive me. When they did, said, we'll forgive you. Then he ran back there and got on his knees in front of that boy. Said, you're a criminal because I let you get back because I took your parents' money there as well and paid me not to put you in jail. I'm the way if you get a criminal, forgive me, I want you to be saved. Before you left, the boy got saved. Went across and took that girl by the hand, got out on his knees and said, young lady, I robbed you of your virtue. I'm the first man that ever earned you. I couldn't have done that had my own brass buttons, and you know it, and I know it. I don't know why you'll never forgive me or not. I know it. The town knows you're running the house of prostitution. But I want you to know that right of God. I want you to forgive me. And if you can't, I want you to accept me. God saved her. When he got through that morning, there's 19 grown people walking the house for God because he went back down. What was it? He got the well cleaned out and the river got to run in. He caught transgressors and the sinners the ways of God and they got converted. Yeah. When you get your well cleaned out, not the Holy Ghost or not some other kind of a mess of religion, when you get your well cleaned out, the waters will pour out of that. Jesus said, I'll be so poor river of any water. You don't need to be black. You don't need to tell them. You don't need some miraculous experience. That's not what you need to get your well cleaned out. Yeah. And when you get your well cleaned out, you will tell the sinners, and they'll get saved. Amen. Amen. That's the whole story. Let's look at it. My right, friends, Kenny, Charles T. Kenny done well all over this country. When that old man come through, walk in a restaurant, Cooks, the waiters, and the people as far as the conviction could see. When I went down to the factory, she had to hold the factory. So many people fall the conviction. When they came to town, the house of prostitution, and the houses closed up because the power gone flowed out in you like a mighty river. When old movie came through, it was the same thing. When old Jonathan Edwards stood up and preached under the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. People grabbed the back of and just cried for mercy. I was saved. Oh, Lord, God, I have went through your state. Years ago, I preached to every liquor joint in the state of North Carolina was closed, except up here at Saul's there. And he went in there and preached and prayed and wept before God to the close the last legal place of liquor in this state. They had to put him in the trunk of the car and throw the quill so we can get him out, keep the liquor crowd and kill him. But he didn't stop until he closed the liquor joint. Now that our bankers come along and patronize them, sympathize them, right. Amen. and say they don't see no harm in drinking. Right. All of that. Right. You see, the devil's still up the preacher's wells. The devil's still up the teacher's wells. 
that was filled up our churches with modernism and liberal teaching, compromising pussy pussy teaching. And as a result, he's a bad gosh. My friend, they're filling up our wealth because, listen, they got our government, they got our educational system, they got our recreational system, they got our literary system, they got our artistic system. Oh, then the devil got it, got in America, it's new test for churches still a preaching and a teaching and saying the truth of God. And my friends, they're trying to fill up our wells and where we won't get nothing out to do anything with. Amen. God help us to see it tonight. The wells are in our hearts, but they fill our enemies by the modernists and by the liberals and by the critics and by the others. Our forefathers dug these wells with prayer and sacrifice on their knees and patient before God and prayed and prayed and fasted and their lives were burned at the stake and they put in jail. Right. They starved to death in the dungeons and they killed. You hear that the sons of two generations of the purest blood ever given in America has fallen in two wars trying to save America. And if we Baptists and we church people don't get our wells cleaned out and save America, we're traitors to the right. next generation of the sons of America. We're traitors to our forefathers. We're traitors to the old preachers of yesterday. And they got the men and women that blazed the trail and cut out from the bush and they burned and starved and beat to death for the kingdom of God. The wells are here, but my friends, he said, God sent an Isaiah. My people committed to evils. Isaiah <coughs> My people committed to evils. They forsaken the fountains of living water, healed mm -hmm. about cisterns, broken cisterns that hold the water. What's it mean? When you dig a well, you dig down until you find a large stream, and you will always get water out of it. Drought, rain, and rain, you get water. But when you got a cistern, you have to put a gutter down to keep a house and a down spot. You dig a hole in the ground, wall it up with a rock or a brick or something fast. You run your water in there. It's like running in a jug. The jug cracks in the water, see, it fell. You dig these underground tanks called cisterns. You run water along the end of the house and run down in there. It had a hole in and a truck was dumped in there. But if the walls of that cistern crack and all seeps out, you get the water. Get the hole in the ground. But my friends, it don't make a difference. It don't rain. You don't have no water in the system. Got to rain to get water. It's dependent on some other source for its water. But the well that's got a living stream is independent on rain or catching water or holding water. It comes flowing through there all the time. And what we need to realize, we all need no more sister water. Too long we Baptists are trying to take somebody else's post. And somebody else's way of running the church. And somebody else is where to put it on, and we got a bunch of cisterns, and when they crack, when they don't get the thing to shoot, crack their cisterns, they're on the song right. Don't like the preacher. Crack your cisterns. Got my feelings, sir. Crack your cisterns. Crack your cisterns. No one's not sound. But if you got the real thing, my friend, preach your law, preach, and uh, people treat you right or don't treat you right. The river runs in the house. You're not depending on somebody else's water yes. to keep you going. Yes. And all you got depending on somebody else to keep your water yes. going, you're in house. Yes. What you need is get your well started yes. down here. Yes. 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 Don't help us to see that. What is the business that's done to your well? And it's here now. It hurt feelings with lust instead of love, with unforgiveness, with pride, with memory, with strife, with confusion. What's in your well, huh? Will you join me, Chris? God really blessing you, or you bring it all down to the sun like tomorrow that's going to hell. You lost minutes. You lost the excitement of the church. You said, well, come on, Joe. 
Well, how about talking about some dancing and drinking and beaching and drinking and picnic and so on? Come on, John. Let's go here. Come on. And the government? Then he said, Rejoice and you're no more out of it. Now, let me tell you something. You Baptists been saved. You quit running around here hunting for something else. You don't need the Holy Ghost, Tom Parker. You don't need to be polite. You don't 